Hey, so I have a request for how to demonstrate how to use both the temp alarm and the isotherm. Uh, real quick disclaimer, this is not any kind of tutorial about how to use these in the field. Uh, that's both an art and a science and ain't nothing you'll really learn off of a YouTube video. But this is how they work and how you can operate them. Um, and then I'll kind of give a few tips on what you would do. So obviously this is me just sitting at, this is actually a laser CNC machine right here. This machine so it's pretty cool but i'm just sitting out in my garage and the mavic 2 enterprise is sitting there pointing at me making this video so let's start off with um well let's say, let's start off with the temp alarm uh one of the interesting things about both the temp alarm and isotherm is they're really a two you need two tools to make it effective okay and you can use by the way isotherm and temp alarm at the same time uh, but they they because they work separately. But anyway, let me let's get into it. So first thing that you need to do for temp alarm is if you were flying this in the field, the very first thing you'd want to do is put it up at the altitude that you're going to be flying. Um, if you're flying at 150 feet, fly, put it up at 150 feet before you do this. Right? It's important because uh, you have you your sensor is going to uh, get a different value paying altitude. But anyway, first thing that we're going to do is we're going to bring up the spot meter. All right, and uh, what I wanna do is I wanna spot what I want to alarm on. Now, what this is re metering me is basically 81 degrees on my arm. Um, on my face up here, it's 85 degrees, okay? And, I, and you're gonna see why that's important. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn the spot meter off. Now the next thing that I'm going to do, is I'm going to hit my menu button and you see you got the camera video on the wrench. You're going to scroll down to where you get temp alert, right? I'm going to hit temp alert and I'm going to turn that on. Okay. Now, do you remember it said alert threshold, right? And you remember it was like 80 something on my arm, one on my arm and 84 on my face. I set that to 80, but let's just say, let's just say I was up at a higher altitude and that meter, I, my, my face metered at, I don't know, 75. Well, then I would want to set that to maybe 70 degrees, all right? Depending on the background temperature. You have to you have to figure out what you want it to alert on, okay? So that's important to remember. All right, now, once you have that set, you see it's still really not doing anything. Again, I told you each one of these works in conjunction with another tool. So in order to make the temp alert work properly, you hit this little thermometer icon and you bring up your area meter all right and you hear that so you can see that the max temperature that it's reading in that square is 85 minimum of 65 my alarm threshold is 80 now i can move this square over here and that's alar alarming on my leg let me see if i can get it over here okay so now yeah, let, me, let me shrink it down a little bit here let me bring it over here okay so now now it's not going to alarm because this cabinet is only 66 degrees, which is about ambient in here. All right. So if this, if you were looking, if you're, this is a police operation, you were looking for someone to, to peek their head around the corner. As long as you knew the right temperature to set that on, you could set it here. And this could be the area you're looking. And if your SWAT team is over here, it won't alarm on them. Now, as soon as that guy pokes his head around the corner, all right, watch this. I'm going to stick my hand over here as if this is his head. You see that? Okay, makes sense. And you can resize this square and put it wherever you want. All right, and that's how you can see it's alerting and it show you the temperature it is, okay? And if I don't want that thing to go off, I can turn the volume down if I want to. I don't want to hear that. But if I need to just turn that off, I'm simply going to turn that off and now the temp alarm goes away, okay? Makes sense, clear as mud, hopefully that's good. Okay, so that is how you use the temp alarm. The next thing that I'm gonna show you is how to properly use isotherm. Now, again, it will be different out in the field, but this is the very basics on how you make it work, okay? And again, be very clear, this is, all, the way that this thing is gonna be shown will be with the Mavic 2 Enterprise Dual on the crystal sky. If you're running on an iOS or you're running XT2, it'll be different. But that's what I was requested to show. So here it is. Um, see this little 
icon on the left I'm going to hit that now I have this little menu down here on the far right it's unlabeled unfortunately I don't know why it's not labeled but it's not I'm gonna turn that on okay now as you can see it's already changed what it looks like okay remember I told you each one of these works in pairs with two tools so in order to show this properly I'll, over here I have this little icon on the top I can hit that all right, now I can pick wh however I want this thing to be displayed. Maybe I want cold spot, maybe I want hot spot, maybe I want a gray, maybe I want this. In my case, what, what really works for me the best uh, for my eyes is going to be this hot metal ISO, okay? So I'm going to put it on there. I'm gonna come back here. Now here's, the, here's what you're doing. Remember we spot metered a, a range that I wanted to highlight in purple and, and pinks up here okay if you look the now, now interestingly DJ has these backwards see how it shows the highest 77 and the low 104 they're swapped I mean just use common sense and and just know that so this one should be the low this one should be the high but what this thing is doing is anything that falls within 77 degrees uh, to 104 degrees is going to be in the range of the pinks and the yellows Okay, anything outside of that is going to be in the grays. So hopefully you can see this okay. I don't know how well that looks on, on this video, but anyway, I'm just going to tell you my arms and my, my uh, face are, are pink and yellow. Now, if I, if I just to show you, if I take this and I start bringing this, this low temperature up, you see how now... Hopefully now you can see now that all the pinks are gone. Okay. Remember, remember that I was metering at like 84 degrees. Now only this, my jawbone here has any kind of color to it. The rest of it is gray. If I bring this down the other way too far, now you can see my whole body. If we bring it down too far now, you should be able to see that it's starting to pick up some things in the room. Gone way too far at that point. All right. So ideally, in this case, it would be somewhere right around 77 degrees to 104. And for the other one, you can see there it starts getting more and more and more intense. And to where it gets white. But that's now we got such a low range, 77 to 80 degrees. All right. So basically what you'll want to do to get this properly set is you'll want to get at the approximate range that you you're going to look to detect a person uh, maybe that's 100 feet maybe it's 50 feet maybe it's 200 feet you're going to want to put that you're going to put yourself at that about that distance and you're going to want to dial this in on you before you start looking for a missing person or a suspect or anything like that okay and i don't know how well this camera is going to show these colors but i'm just going to show this this is yellow and pink and blue and it's it's really highlighting uh very well all right so now it's in now it would be in isotherm mode and again if i wanted to use both all i have to do is hit this bring bring on the area meter and now i have both the alarm and isotherm working at the same time all right so that's that that's how you operate them um if you have any questions, leave it in the comments. Uh, that's, in a nutshell, that's all the controls there are to it. Uh, what most people miss is they expect to just turn it on and it works. Remember, each one of them, you really, to get it to work, you turn it on, activate it, and then you have another set of knobs or, or dials or controls that you need to actually work with to, to make it work properly for you. So, anyway, hope this helped, and we'll talk to you later.